Hey guys, so based on yesterday's video, which was about creating drop downs with filters in, in Figma, someone asked me an additional question. But before I even get to that question, I'd just like to show what we did yesterday, just in case people haven't seen the video. So I have a bunch of items, let's say in a listing or something, and I want to filter them using variables. So I have a car, I have a bus, I have a bike, and like I just have these three items. If I want to filter them, I can click on car, it's going to show me the car. If I click on bike, it's going to show me the bike. And the same goes for the bus. And if I click on all, it's going to show everything. So now let's get to the question. So the question is, here's the next challenge. I'm trying to figure out what if I want to filter for multiple categories. Clicking on a car should only show the cars. Then click on bikes. It should show cars and bikes. If I click again to deselect, hide the category I've deselected. So basically, if they clicked on bike again, it's going to deselect the bike. So it's sort of like a checkbox filter rather than just a single thing or a single drop down. But if I deselect everything, it should show all of them again. So if I if the person deselects everything, everything should be shown. So I've recreated what the author actually wanted me to, or sorry, the subscriber actually wanted me to create. So as you can see, if I click on filter items, we basically have something like this. If I click on a car, it's just gonna show the car. If I click on the bike, it's just gonna show the bike. If I deselect the bike, it's gonna deselect the bike. If I click on the bus, it's gonna show the bus. If I click on the bike, it's gonna show the bike. If I deselect everything, it's gonna show me nothing or it's gonna show me everything, but it's gonna have all of these items deselected. Now, one thing I wanted to mention is I don't go ahead and answer every single comment on my YouTube. Like I don't create a video for it. I may answer it and even answering it is a bit hard, but I can't really do that. Like that's practically impossible for me. So what I have done is I, as many of you know, I actually have my own course, which is Figma Noob to Pro, where I basically answer most of the questions that people are throwing out of me out at me so this is my community as well it's basically a huge course that has a lot of different things it's basically updated with all of the new things as well like mastering variables and variable prototyping mastering prototyping and the auto layout stuff that was additionally added uh, in the config is also updated in this course and basically you get access to this community as well where, where people can basically just ask me questions directly as you can see there are people asking me tons of questions all of these questions and I'm basically answering them and all of that stuff so if you really want to bump up your figma game if you really want to be involved if you want to just have someone be there me or my team to answer any questions you have regarding figma regarding designing regarding ux ui or whatever you basically need to join this course i personally feel like if i just had this community even this community would be worthwhile for you to ask any questions and then obviously get immediate help we're actually planning to have a zoom call as well on friday where every one of my uh, students can actually just come in and ask me any questions they want regarding design and figma and stuff along those lines now before i even go forward with this exercise i just want to let you know this is a really advanced exercise so i mean if you get confused don't blame me blame the questioner <laughs> maybe <laughs> actually blame me as well because i ideally want to simplify it and help you understand every single thing but this is a complex functionality that not a lot of people would be able to achieve honestly i think like even professionals wouldn't be able to achieve it and it took me some time to actually wrap my head around it as well but basically, the first thing that we want to do is we want to create a checkbox component. Fortunately, I have a checkbox component that's coming from uh, Tailwind. Sorry, not Tailwind, uh, Untitled. And I'm just going to add it here. And let's just go ahead and create a component. I'm going to create an, a component on top of it. Here's the component itself. And basically what we want to do is we want to create a separate component for every single type of a filter because the functionality, the variables that each element is going to change is going to be different, right? So we cannot create a global, a single component that basically changes its value dynamically or something along those lines. We can't really do that. So let's just go ahead and create our car. Our, this is going to be our checkbox filter. And we're going to create another variant. And this variant is going to be on. This previous one is going to be off. In this on state, obviously, and let me just go ahead and do one thing. I'm just going to select both of these. I'm going to say this is going to be the fill container, and I'm just going to reduce this width a bit. Okay, so this is going to be our car, and this one is going to be our car as well. In this instance, it's just going to be enabled, so it's going to be checked. And we also want to do that for every single value, basically, because as I mentioned, every single value is going to, every single element is going to be changing other variables so we cannot create a global component right now in figma figma does not allow you to dynamically specify the variable name that you're going to be changing in the prototype in the component itself that's not something that figma allows maybe in the future but i don't think figma is even thinking that far beyond maybe uh at least of adding that functionality because it's going to be very complex i'm going to add another variant property this is going to be the name of the men of the item itself the first one is going to be car 
and we are going to duplicate this for car and like everything else. So basically what we want to happen is, and now here we basically get into a lot of complexity. The first thing that I want to do is I want to uh, obviously duplicate this for the bus. This is the bus and then I'm going to duplicate this for the bike. So here we have the bike. Let's just name this the bike. Okay, so let's just name this bike and let's just name this bike as well. This is going to be a bus and this one is going to be a bus as well. And let me just add that, add a fill to it so you can see what's happening. Now it's a bit lively and you can see everything that's happening. The first thing that I wanna do right off the bat is I'm gonna to go to my local variables. I'm gonna create another variable called uh, all. So this is gonna define whether everything is selected and by default, everything is selected. But is the bus selected? Is the car selected? Is the bike selected individually? No, they're not selected. So I'm gonna disable them. Now, as soon as I disable them, as you can see, every single item basically disappeared. And the reason for that is every single is item, item is connected to basically, let me just increase the screen to basically each of these variables. So what I'm gonna do intentionally is I'm gonna duplicate this whole thing. And this is an easy way of achieving this functionality. Otherwise, you need to add a lot of conditionals and all of that stuff. I'm gonna say all selected. And in this particular instance of all selected, this is my all selected box. I'm just gonna go here and de-link, de-link all of these individual links to the individual variables. This bike is no longer going to be linked to this bike. This bus is no longer going to be linked to the bus and all of that. So now if I deselect it, as you can see, the top row is basically connected to all of these individual variables, but this one is not, right? This one isn't. So I'm just gonna place that at the top. And actually, let me just move this at the top. And what I wanna do is I wanna basically link this particular thing to the all item, all variables visibility. Now that's done. Now, if we have a look at this, basically everything should be working exactly the way it is because we haven't really changed anything. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create another menu. And in this menu, we're gonna add our items. So by default, we're gonna add this car item and then we can add the bike item and we can add, sorry, the bus item and then we can add the bike item. Okay, we have these things and I'm just gonna add some spacing here, 24 pixels, maybe 16 pixels in the middle. There you go, okay. So now that that's done, I also wanna actually go ahead and increase the size of these, but now if I increase them, because I mean, Untitled UI isn't really doing their components well. Sometimes it get messed up, but fortunately in this case it didn't. Okay, so I'm just gonna increase the size and now I'm gonna link this thing to this. So if I click on this, I want to open the overlay. It should be placed manually somewhere here, that's fine. And clicking on the outside should basically hide it. So if we go here, so something like this is working outside clicking outside is working as well so now we're going to go ahead we're going to say this is going to be linked to this and this one is going to be linked to this and let's see if this works okay this works fine now getting to the additional complexities of this particular thing so basically what we want to say here is I'm gonna to go to the prototype, I'm gonna to go to the click interaction, I'm gonna add another conditional here. I'm gonna say the first conditional is going to be if everything is selected, so if all are selected, so if all equals to true, which is the default case, what should happen? So if all equal to true and I click on a checkbox, then basically the first thing that should happen is the all should no longer be equal to true, right? B basically just went ahead and did some modifications, so all should be false. So if we just have a look at what happens, if I click on this, everything disappears because now the all container basically disappears, taking everything along with it. Now we also obviously wanna say that if for example, we also wanna set another variable, which is going to be the car to be true. Now that's gonna actually impact the other uh, container that we have, which is individually going to expose the car. So if you click on this, unfortunately that did not happen because I did not click outside, so that's fine. Uh, car and now we have the car. So that's perfectly and working really well. Now, irrespective of whether all is true or not, we always wanna obviously have the uh, the car be true uh, in this case, because we're, just, we're clicking on the deselected item. So the car is always going to be true in this case. So that's that. And I think that's pretty much it, honestly. Honestly, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, that we need to do here. Okay, now we're gonna do the car thing. So in the car thing, what we wanna do if like, for example, the car is active. If this, if a person clicks on the active state of the car, we wanna check another conditional. 
The first thing we want to check is if whether the bus and the bike. So I'm going to go to the bus and the bike. Bus is the bus equal to true? Oh, sorry, is the bus equal to false? And is the bike equal to false as well? So I know it's a bit complicated. I mean, basically what we're checking is like, for example, if only the car is selected and the bus and the bike are not selected, then what I want to do is I, anytime a person basically clicks on the car, then all should become true, right? So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that all should be true. If basically everything is uh, not selected and I deselect the car itself, then I also wanna deselect the car. So the car should be false as well. If I'm basically clicking on the selected item, then everything should just become true. Um, the all should be true and everything, the, the car itself should be false. But irrespective, anytime we're basically clicking on it, if it's selected, if the item is checked, then obviously we still want to go ahead and make the car false. So that's a basic thing that's basically happening. Okay, so now that that's done, let's just go ahead and see what happens. Car, and then if we deselect it, we basically have everything. So car, just the car selected and yeah, I guess that's that. And this is pretty much all you need. So I'm just gonna copy, just gonna click here in the interactions. I'm gonna copy this interaction. I'm gonna go to my bus and the bike and I'm gonna paste it. So as you can see, it's now pasted. We're just gonna go ahead and change the change to state because we obviously don't wanna change it to the car um, variable or variant, sorry. So that's fine. And we obviously wanna go ahead and change anywhere where we basically have the car listed to a bus. So we have a car listed here and I'm gonna change that to a bus. Everything else remains the same. And then here, this car is listed. I'm gonna change that to a bus. That's all fine and well. Similarly, we're gonna go here. We're gonna change this car to a bike, I guess. So the bike is here. And then let's go and change this to a bike here as well. Okay, so the top level components are done. Let's go to this one. I'm gonna copy this interaction as well. And I'm gonna paste it into both of these things. Obviously, I'm gonna change the change to, so the change to should be changed to the original one that we actually want. Now, in this instance, we obviously wanna change a few other things as well. In this, obviously, car state, we wanna change the car to a bus, and we wanna change this car to a bus as well. A lot of laborious stuff, I know, and it may be frustrating for you, some of you guys to actually follow, but hopefully when you see this video a bunch of times, maybe you would be able to understand what's going on. So here, however, we don't need the bus, we need the car. So I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna basically remove this. I'm gonna say the car equal to equal to false. If the car is equal to equal to equal to equal to false. And okay, this is fine. The car and the bike are false in this case. And in this case, obviously we want the bus and the car to be false. So the bus, the first one is the bus already that's selected. In this case, we just wanna go ahead and we wanna change that to car equal to equal to false. Okay, that's done. Uh, bus and car are equal to false. Fortunately, as you can see, this is messed up is deselecting the car. So I wanna just go ahead and change that to bike. Similarly here, I'm gonna go that and change that to bike. Let's refresh, car, bus, bike, deselect bike, bike is gonna deselect bike, bus is gonna deselect the bus and car is gonna deselect the car and everything's gonna be visible. Again, bike and then car visible and then maybe I wanna disable the bike. Sorry, you don't click on the checkbox itself because that is linked to something else and that just messes it up. So I would probably have to remove that but you get the idea. If I click here, that's working fine. The reason why this is not working fine is because there's an interaction on the inner component itself on the checkbox and it's overriding the top level click that we're doing here. And actually, let me just go ahead and deselect it so you guys aren't really confused about it. So here's the checkbox space. As you can see, the mouse enter thing is doing something. So I'm gonna deselect it. And similarly, I can go ahead and deselect it here. Actually, just clicking all of these things so many times takes a lot of time. But I'm still going to do it just to avoid any confusion. Okay, now everything should be working fine, even if you click on the checkbox itself. Let's see how it works. So clicking on the car here, bus here, bike here, that's working fine. Bike, 
bus and then car and everything's visible. So basically this is how you go ahead and create a complex filter functionality that basically the author asked and, or sorry, the subscriber asked and that's pretty much it. Let me know what you think.